Hello, it's Scott Manley here with Kerbal Space Program 1.1. We have an early preview to share with you. Now, Kerbal Space Program 1.1 is the transition of the game engine from Unity 4 to Unity 5. This has been a long time coming, and pretty much a lot of the work to do this was done in collaboration with the console developers Flying Tiger. Now, the transition has not been easy. A number of older systems broke, and as a consequence, they had to develop replacement systems. But if we jump straight into orbit to look at this magnificent space station, this is a stock space station from a, an earlier version of the game, and normally it would run at about 4 frames per second. Now we're easily getting 10 plus frames per second. That's because a large part of this has involved optimizing everything, replacing the physics system with PhysX 3.3. We are about to get a collision. Will it cause the game to hang for 5 minutes? No, it just flew straight through there. Some people were skeptical, but I can confirm there are some serious performance improvements. It's not just it feels slightly faster, it is significantly faster by every objective measure. Now you might notice that the UI is looking slightly different, icons are in slightly different places, some of the widgets seem to look slightly different. The reason is the UI pretty much had to be redesigned from scratch. Now, previous versions of Kerbal Space Program actually used multiple different UI toolkits from Unity because the parts were developed by different people and kind of made to work together by the power of will or whatever. So one of the nice new tricks in the user interface is remember your context-sensitive right-click menus? Well, of course, now you get that little pointer. Oh, that's helpful enough, but you know what's really fantastic? is you can grab these windows, move them about, and you can pin them. So I can stick that there, and then it will remain, you know, regardless of what I'm doing. Let's uh, put the gear up here. Now, this is very nice because say you're launch, you've launched a space plane or something, and you've got an engine which has a mode toggle on it, just hypothetically. Now I don't need to go back to the, uh, you know, now I don't need to right click on this every single time. I can toggle it from here instant buttons attached to your user interface, saving you tons of time and lots of clicking. Now, this vehicle here is supposed to demonstrate another thing they had to replace, the wheel physics. The wheel physics used modules which are no longer supported in Unity 5, so they decided to write their own. Let's unlock the brakes. Now this one I've set up with a rear wheel drive and front wheel steering. So I can just start driving this around. Oh, yes, and i got to remember my control mapping here. So this will drive like a rear-wheel drive car, which means if I apply power on the corners, I can lose the tail a little. <laughs> it's hardly Gran Turismo or Drive Club or anything, but it's, a, it's an improvement in many ways. Now, obviously, these are the high-speed wheels, or... Oh, it's actually quite easy to lose it when you're driving. I think there might need to be some... Okay, there might need to be some adjustments here. Look, I can actually do donuts on the spot. Some modder is obviously going to have to add tire tracks here and, and clouds of smoke for burnouts, but yeah. If you come back to the Space Center screen, you can also see these nice little icons here. Look, I mean, this is an evolutionary step now. 1.1 isn't really adding new gameplay, although it does adjusting some existing gameplay, it's certainly some back-end logic, uh, some contract logic is being changed. A number of these features are really designed for new players to make the game more playable. There is the KSpedia, which will, uh, and this art is not final, but this is a place to teach you all about Kerbal Space Program. It lets you learn all the stuff you need without going to any terribly narrated YouTube channels. So, so you can see a lot of these changes are largely targeted at new players that may be coming in on the forthcoming console versions. But, I mean, for the older players, there's not a huge amount of new gameplay. But that doesn't matter, really, because what this is, is the game has reached the stage where it's evolving, it's optimizing itself. The performance improvements are fantastic if you're building anything big. And the addition of 64-bit support on Windows is finally going to put paid to many of the problems with running heavily modded installs. 
The core changes to the game are minimal. The UI changes are nice, but really this represents Kerbal Space Program maturing somewhat. And as a long-term player, this is exactly what I've been asking for for a long time. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Fly safe.